know what they say? That big things come in small packages. Well, that is exactly what we have here today. A itty bitty box full of adventure. Welcome to the Game Cave, where the adventure starts right here at the table. I am your host, David Lee, and today's game, welcome to the dungeon. The object in this Pressure Lux style game is to defeat all the monsters in the dungeon or be the last player standing. Do this, earn two success cards, and you are victorious. Do not, and you fall like all the other adventures. So let's head over to the table and see exactly how this game is played and set up. So we'll see you at the table. First thing we want to do is grab our adventurer. Whatever adventurer you want to use for the first game. And it recommends that we use the warrior. So let's go ahead and set the warrior up here. Let me try to get it centered there. Uh, and we are going to put all the equipment down beside the warrior. And a personal preference is I like to keep all of my hit point, uh, the awarded hit points to one side or the other. And I'm gonna raise this up just a little bit so oops, so we can get the uh, player reference cards down for you. Uh, also, uh, keep in mind that you're going to need a little bit of space up in here for the dungeon. So we're going to remove our, or take our uh, monster cards and we're going to put that to one side or the other. And then we're going to count out five success cards. And you only need five. Uh, that's the max in a four player game. Someone's going to get that second card. So you don't need any more than five ever in a game of four. Uh, the success cards go to the opposite side. We're going to leave a little empty spot here for our dungeon. The game is played over a few rounds uh, until someone has two success cards declaring them the winner. Or if you are the last player standing, you will be declared the winner. Uh, so how's this done? Easy. There are... During uh, your turn... You can do one of two things, and that is you can draw a card from the monster deck, or you can pass your turn, meaning you cannot participate in this round any longer. And if you draw a card, there's again two things that you can do, two actions that you can take during your turn. You can place a card in the dungeon, or you can place a card to your side here and then you would have to remove a piece of equipment. And this is where the bluffing and the strategy comes in is, is during the, the removal of this equipment. So if you want to... Uh, play this card. Well, let's just say, let's just give a little scenario here. Let's throw out a scenario here so we better understand some of these rules. Uh, just real quick, too, the reference cards here. I'll see if I can get that. Let me focus in a little better on that. Uh, so the reference card here shows you a couple things. So to the far left of the card, it shows you the strength value of that creature. Then the next is the picture of the creature, which also indicates how many is inside that deck. And then to the right is the special equipment that destroys that card. Uh, you'll notice that the golem, there's two golems in each deck, and the only thing that can defeat the golem is the hammer, and that is played with the barbarian. So we're not playing the barbarian, so the golem, we have to be very careful with the golem because he'll take away five hit points. So what's going to happen is... I got this turned upside down, don't I? Oh, I got some cards mixed up here. So what's going to happen is a player on their turn is going to draw a card, look at the card, and decide whether or not it goes into the dungeon. Uh, face down, of course, so no one else can see it. Or face down next to you. So let's go over a few scenarios here. 
So this is player one, player two, and then player three. Player one goes first, so he's going to decide whether or not he wants to pass his turn or he wants to draw from the deck. And saying it's the first turn of the game, he's going to draw a card. He's going to look at the card, and he realizes it's a golem. It's hard to beat, so he could put it in the middle, hoping that someone else goes to the dungeon and not him. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to go ahead and put that in the dungeon. Now, player two goes. He's going to look at the card, and he... Ooh, and remember, you're, you're only going to see the cards that you see, and, and you're stacking the deck how you want to stack it. But you also got to remember, other players are stacking it the way they want to play it. Uh, he's afraid. There's two possible things that could happen here. So, this is the Lich. And there's one item on the board that can destroy that, and that is the Holy Grail. This one right here. That can destroy that uh, creature with taking out, without taking any damage. Uh, and he feels that even if he goes through that with this card alone that he knows is in there, he would survive. So player three is going to go, and he's going to draw a card, and it's a vampire. Again, the Holy Grail's out there. Player three, he's going to go through the dungeon as well. So it goes back to player one, and player one says, I'm going to pass. I do not want to take the chance on going through that dungeon. Even though all the equipment's still out here, I don't want to take the chance. Let me see if I can ricochet this light away from the cards. There we go. Which means i got to focus in a little better. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then uh, player two goes. He's going to draw. And it's a skeleton. He's going to put that in the dungeon. Player three goes. Ah, it's a demon. He doesn't want to face that demon regardless whether or not he goes through the dungeon or not. So he's going to take it out. But by taking it out, he's also going to remove one of these cards. So he is probably going to remove... Um... By, by signaling or taking this out of the deck may indicate at some point, which this is the Dragon Spear, by the way, uh, and the Dragon Spear defeats a dragon. So by taking this out for player three, it may send a signal to these other two players, specifically two since he's still in the game, that player three placed the dragon in the dungeon deck. And he's going to pass on his next turn. So, uh, here's where some of this uh, bluffing and risk comes into play. Uh, it is player's two's turn, and he decides that he doesn't want to take the chance on meeting that dragon. There's quite a few cards in this deck. So, even though there's still a lot of stuff on this board, this is possibly a dangerous deck to go through. But... This guy here, player three, is going to be going through the dungeon since there's only, or since he's player one and player two has passed their turns. That signals that the last player standing takes his journey through the dungeon. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip over these cards. And all I like to do is one at a time, go through them, resolve them, and see if we can be successful going through the dungeon so what's going to happen here so you're going to take the character strength versus your hit points and you're going to subtract these two numbers from your hit points or not these two numbers i'm sorry but all these numbers combined there's 11 hit points on the board since all the equipment's still on the board the two equipment that count for extra hit points uh, so there's 11 hit points on the board. There's nothing you can do about this golem. There's five points out the window already. So you're just going to subtract that. And what I'll just do is I'll remove that piece of equipment. And I and I know that there's still three hit or six hit points left. All right, so the next character in the dungeon is a lich. And the lich is six, but he is defeated by the Holy Grail. So guess what? This Holy Grail defeats him. We can go ahead and remove him from the deck. The Vampire, the Holy Grail, defeated. And the Skeleton Warrior, he can be defeated by the Torch or the Holy Grail. So this is as, as a success for player three. So he would gain a success uh, card. And then you're going to shuffle the deck, rearrange, and play again until somebody has two success tokens or 
is the last player out. And what I mean by that is if player three was unsuccessful going through the dungeon, he would have to flip over his card indicating the red side, which means you've only got one more chance. So you get two chances to go through the dungeon to go through successfully. If you do not, you will flip it over your card into the red side, and then on your next turn, you will be out of the game. And that is Welcome to the Dungeon. Now, that was the Warrior. You've also got three other uh, adventures that you could take through the dungeon. Now, keep in mind, uh, so you get the Rogue, you get the Barbarian, and you get the Mage. Just keep in mind that there are some subtle differences between these characters here. Uh, I would like to, I would have liked to have seen more variances between the characters. Uh, they've all got to start out with 11 hit points. The only difference with the hit points is if the equipment starts, uh, your extra hit point equipment starts going away, then you're just left with your basic starting hit points. Uh, the mage with the lowest hit points, that could be bad news for the mage. Now, there are some differences between their weapons, but for the most part, everything is playable almost the same. I don't like to say the same. Uh, just play it and you'll find out. But thanks for watching the video. Like and subscribe down here at the bottom somewhere. And if you have any uh, suggestions on games that we can do, feel free to put those in the comments down below. If you also see something that you would like us to do in the videos, please leave those comments down below. And if you're up to it and you feel like it, go visit our Patreon page. Another little graphic will pop up here at the bottom. Go visit us there and sign up for some of our lovely, lovely perks that we have that we are or actually we're gathering to do for all of our Patreons. So until the next video, keep adventuring, adventurers.